Marva Nichols, Miss GSU 9192, and I have Coach Hugh Jackson, the leader of the G-Men football team, on the Hugh That Podcast on MTNV Sports Podcast Network. So it's the coach and the queen on the scene and ready, always ready to chop it up about GSU football. Hello, Coach Jackson. What's up, Queen? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I know you're coming off of the field uh, straight to the microphone. And I just want to say, hey, you know, that shows your dedication and commitment to uh, getting information out to the fans and, and, and keeping us updated about what's going on with GSU football. So tell us how Hugh and the G-Men crew are doing. You know what, Marva? We are, we are alive and kicking. Uh, last week, we did not feel that we put our best uh, foot forward, and we all take responsibility for that, starting with me. Um, I hold our coaches accountable, our players accountable. We understand that we did not play anywhere close to what we want uh, to play. So the only way you can change that is by getting back in the lab and going to work, and that's what we did very quickly. On that Sunday, we had a tremendous meeting. Uh, they had the day off on Monday. We got back at it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday today, and we're looking forward to, uh, you know, putting some some uh, exclamation points on these practices this week, tomorrow. Awesome. So tell me, you you said that um, you all, you know, went back into the lab. Lab meaning uh, watching film. I heard you say that. But how do you um, actually deal with the psychodynamics of your team um, losing, you know, <clears throat> to that great magnitude? I think it's really important that you be very transparent with your team and you show them the things and the reasons why you lose. And um, like I said, I have to <clears throat> first look at me and make sure that I'm creating the right environment for these young men to be all they can be. And then you have to make sure that they understand what it takes uh, to win at the level that we want to win at. You know, there's a price that you have to pay. You know, there was a lot of surprises in that first game for me. You know, I think our players to a man to say we did things very uncharacteristics of who we had been, regardless of what the reasons were and for. You know, it was a great learning experience for our staff, for our players. First time we were together, first time we we're on the road, first time we we're in a game together. And I think we learned a lot about ourselves. And I, I really was pleased with the resolve of the young men this week, understanding that, hey, look at here, in order for us to be different, we have to do different. And so uh, they set out to do that. That sounds awesome. And let me tell you, I could see um, the, the camaraderie uh, via the pictures and um, some of the video of you all preparing for the game, you all walking down into the stadium there at Arkansas State. And the young men seem to be very excited. But like you said, the accountability starts with you. And mm -hmm. so that that says a lot about who you are as as a coach. And I just want to commend you for conveying that to our audience, because, you know, grambling, we're, we're spoiled. We're used to winning. Um, a lot of people were questioning, you know, what is going on? Uh, I think, though, that, you know, can you give the fans a realistic expectation of an all new team, you know, all new staff at this juncture uh, in, in your era as, as uh, the head coach? Yes, I can. I'm not going to run from what we're here to do, which is win. You know, and we want to get to winning as fast as we can. And uh, we get an opportunity to play another university this week, and we need to get to winning. But in order to do that, there's a lot of things we have to do better. We can't have the, the penalties that we have. We have to get off to a faster start. We have to make the plays that are there for us to be made. And I think that's what it's really about. Um, nobody saw that coming. I didn't, the players didn't, the coaches didn't. To a man, those things do happen. And to me, you have to understand them and understand what it takes to fix them. Um, I think that's why I'm here. You know, nobody likes to lose at that magnitude, as you mentioned. 
the players, the coaches, nobody. We're all very competitive, and that's not what we want to do. But at the same time, it does happen when you walk out for a first time and not sure about who they are, who you are, all those things come into play. But I think that was a lot of soul searching. I think a lot of transparency uh, from our players to uh, coaches, from coaches to players. And I think there's a better understanding of what we're really trying to accomplish here at a high level, you know? So um, like I told them, and I'll say it to everybody, we can create whatever we want, right? But at the same time, there's a work ethic that it takes to get there. And not that our players haven't been working, they've been working extremely hard uh, to get there. But at the same time, we've been playing grambling. Now we're playing other people. (laughs) And so you got to be at your best on game day at game time coaches, players, all of us. And so I think we all, like I said, we take responsibility for it. Nobody's happy about it, but the only way you fix it is get to playing better. Absolutely. And we know that uh, adversity builds character and Mm -hmm. uh, it strengthens your mind as well. And so we're, we're hoping that we believe, I believe in you. I believe in the G men and I I'm looking forward to a a better game this Saturday. Now coach, absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> game day finally finally arrived and you know the Hugh Jackson Hugh that era was started at GSU um tell us what you told the team and your staff before you took the field that we wanted to go out and play Grambling State University football and that was disappointing that we didn't not the way I think we can not the way we believe we can um, you know, it's just sometimes football is a fragile game, right? Things start going not your way and it just can snowball, you know, and you have to have a lot of resolve, a lot of tough character and strength in order to pull it back. When it starts going like that, you got to pull it back. Like I told them, don't worry about the scoreboard. I had it. Well, I didn't have it like that. <laughs> That's for sure. And I think we all get that. But at the same time, like I said, I learned a lot about my team. I learned a lot about my staff and all those things I still love today. I don't, I don't run from that. I have to channel some things differently. I have to point us in different directions at times. But at the same time, I'm, I'm excited about where we're headed. We're not there yet. We understand that. But we're going to keep pushing to get there. And I truly believe that there is a really good football team in that building. And I think we'll start to show that this week. Yeah, you had a lot of talent on the field, you know, throughout uh, the recruiting season and even uh, camp. We saw a lot of uh, film and, uh, you know, videos that were um, featured on our on our social media pages. And so, uh, like you said, we're, we were playing each other. So it's a different uh, 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 ball game now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you mentioned you, you want to play Grambling football. Can you tell um, our fans what? Grambling football looks under your leadership? I think what we're shooting for and what we want it to look like is a very disciplined, intelligent, um, ferocious, dominant football team. That's what we want. We have to get that. We're after that. I'm not going to relent until we get that. And I'm not going to relent after we get that. And so that has to come from me through the assistance to the players. And then it has to be a reflection of that. And so, like I said, I think we understand, you know, to a whole different degree of who we are today and where we need to go. And I think the environment changed. The environment changed because we went and showed not who we want to be. And the only way you can change that is go and work hard to become who you want to be. So it's like I said, it's been a great week of practice. And we're not going to, again, worry about the opponent. We don't worry about us, you know, and the things that we need to do in order to put our best foot forward as we get ready to play against Northwestern State University. Awesome. We know that fortitude is very much needed when you're in a competitive uh, game like they were last week. And and, um, so – I know that you've prepared them or you are preparing them and the coaches also for, you know, to to have that strength of mind uh, going into this game. But they're young. Those are some young guys. And I think they were in the trenches that they've never 
been in before. And so I think uh, that was clearly some of the the uh, issues we were having, just looking as an onlooker and a fan. Um, but coach, I wanted to ask you, um, how did it feel um, you being on the sideline again as the head coach? You know, Marva, it was it was spectacular mm -hmm. um, to be the leader, uh, but no leader likes to leave work undone. And so I felt like work was undone to a ultimate degree. You know, we didn't play well. And like I said, I don't run from that. I mean, that's not I mean, it's it, to me, the total part of this is being transparent about who you are, and what you are. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do we didn't hold up our end of the bargain. You know, as a football team, nobody wants to walk around after getting beat like that. So, like I said, we own it. You know, whether you get beat by one, whether you get beat by 51, it really doesn't matter. You lost. Mm -hmm. And so we have to evaluate what that is, what that was, understand it better and move on. But my experience as a head coach at Grambling State University, I was excited about what I want is what the fans want, what you want, what our players want. They want to win. So at the same time, I want to walk away from a game victorious and go sing the fight song with a big old smile on my face. And that so, number one, right? That number one. <laughs> that so, number one. You know. you know I want to win, Coach. Oh, absolutely. I love winning. I, I love family football, my favorite team in the whole world. And so it would do nothing. But, you know, It would just be a, a heart. My heart would just be pounding with with uh, excitement and glee, especially by your classic, because that is my actual birthday. So remember that, coach. Oh, wow. I will. <laughs> November the 26th oh, yeah. is my birthday. Um, and so I, I'm looking forward to you guys coming on, going on that field and actually, like you said, playing Grambling football, uh, making the corrections. And I know we're all standing by our G men um, and, and, and the coaching staff wishing you all the best now let me ask you this you said we did a lot of things wrong but did we do anything right what did we you do know, well on um last saturday to me what i think we did right is that we never quit you know and i think that's the mark of a team that's going to become a team when they it burned them you know what i mean by that they were really disappointed in the outcome you know, when you have a team that that's laughing and still kind of giggly about it and it's the first game and, oh, it's OK to be all right. That wasn't the tone, you know, and to me, that's the first sign of recognizing that players really start to understand on a different level of what it's really going to take. You know, and people say, well, why don't they understand that yet? Well, it's what you said. We have a very young team. But at the same time, we do have some veterans and some key positions who have to lead. You know, they have to help lead, help mentor some of these guys to understand the level of football you're playing. You know, and so it's uh, imperative that we continue to foster um, the relationships, you know, that within our own football team, um, the leadership within our own football team, uh, and then pass it down and, and pass it back so that these young men understand that, that when the lights come on, that's when you got to come on. You know, you can talk about it like I, I'm, I'm the leader of it all, but the locker room is still the locker room. The locker room makes a lot of decisions, you know, within themselves. And so those leaders who I mentioned, I won't say by name, but they've done a great job of having people understand really what this is all about. This is grandma there is a different expectation, you know, and we have to live up to that. And that's what we're, that's why you're here. You know, we've made that decision and choice and you got to understand the choice that you made when you said you're going to come whether work at Gremlin or play at Gremlin, you know, it means you're chasing greatness. And so I think we all get that. Yes. We are known for our winning tradition and as coach, uh, Eddie Robinson, you say, hell, we are Gremlin. And so that's just the expectation. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, those young men, you know, we do expect for them to step up um, to the call and to to do uh, what they need to do to win and bring bring us another championship, because that's what we're used to. Um, and we want to encourage I want to encourage all the G men, if you're watching this podcast at this time, you know, we are behind you. We want you to continue to uh, work hard and continue to um, listen and, and learn from 
your coaches, and um, uh, we are 100% ready to see you flourish and take our university back to where it belongs at the top, at the top. Uh, and, and so even with saying that, you know, you are the leader and they feed off of your energy. Yes. Uh, tell tell us, coach, how do you use the time between games to get them ready mentally? To me, you really have to, like I said, it's all about creating a, a vision and understanding, really getting them one to understand the opponent at a high level. And then number two, making sure that from a mental emotional, physical standpoint that we're ready to play. And, um, you know, I went back and, and looked at things that I did last week. There are some things I changed up because I thought it was important. You know, you can't keep on doing what you do. You might get something that you don't want. So we made us some adjustments here and there, and we'll see if they reap the, the benefits and rewards. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Arkansas State. That was a better team than what they were a year ago. But I think to a man, to a coach, were they that much better? Um, you know, that's, that's a different discussion for a different time. But I really believe that we didn't execute at a high level the plan that we had laid before us. And so uh, then you have to go back and see all those things too, right? And so we've done that. And I think the players get it. I think the coaches get it. We now know them better. They know us better. They know what the expectation is. And now they got to, you know, meet that expectation. And we have to exceed it on our side, too, as well as coaches. And I think we will. Now, you mentioned expectations. So this week, what, what are your expectations from the team going into the game against Northwestern State? Improvement and winning. I, I'm not kidding. I want to be singing that fight song, Victorious, with holding that finger up. There's no question in my mind. I'm not, uh, Marvin, I'm not going to run from what the ultimate is, is winning. You know, it's, no, it's nothing, it's nothing more, it's nothing less. Uh, losing is, is hard for everybody. Everybody involved, people who love the program, people who are in the program, players, coaches, everybody. Uh, nobody works like we work for losing. We didn't take that bus ride for losing. So we have to understand what you really have to give to win. And uh, sometimes you need that wake up call. Sometimes you need to get get punched to find mm -hmm. out exactly what it's going to be. Absolutely. <laughs> now, I think, you know, sometimes you get you get to look in at your press clippings a little bit and think maybe we've arrived. We haven't yet. We got work to do. We got a long season ahead of us. A lot of games to be played. You know, that was one game. But we don't we can't go have that kind of that kind of showing because that's not who we want it to be. Yes, coach. And I, I want to say thank you for just being transparent. Thank mm -hmm. you for being uh, open tonight. Thank you for owning uh, and being accountable as the leader uh, of Grambling State University's football team. And again, we are looking forward to a better, a better weekend uh, this weekend. And so you all know that we are playing Northwestern State in Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, on Saturday, if you're in the area, please go by or get your ticket right now. Get get on, uh, get a caravan of people. We need some fans down there. I'm all the way in Chicago, but I'm going to be watching. OK, we and and we even have uh, our various alumni groups in Chicago. When I can't make the games on the scene, I will be watching at watch parties with other fellow HBCU alumni uh, groups here in Chicago. So everybody need to go on and get their tickets for the Shreveport game. The G-Men need you in the stands. All right, Coach, we're going to wrap it up. Now, remember, last week I told you that every week you're going to tell us <laughs> what your pregame meal is. Uh, and, and all Graham fam, onlookers and fans, we're going to prepare our meal so we can eat. This is going to be our tradition. This is going to be our little good luck thing, right? Tell us what we're eating right before the game. This game, I, I got to change up, Marvin. Okay. Last week's meal didn't reap the benefits. So All right. All right. We, 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 we're going to change this a little bit. We, change we gotta, it up. I think it's time for a really good salad. Oh. Just, just a really good, healthy, green salad okay. that maybe had a little chicken, a little, 
a little protein to it. But but that's all I think that's needed this week because I'm hungry for victory. Yeah. I want to be just a little hungry this week. I don't want to be full of nothing. I want to be hungry. And yeah. then after the game, we can talk about the after game meal after the game. All right. Well, when we come back next week, you got to tell me what the throwdown was <laughs> after the game. <laughs> you know, I have a, I have nine uncles, and uh, they all can cook, and they call it a throwdown. You know, so I want to know what that throwdown is uh, next week. So you heard it. It's just a green salad with uh, grilled chicken. Uh, and he says he's hungry. He wants, yes. we don't want to, they don't want to get full uh, uh, this week, this weekend before the game. They want to just have just enough to keep them hungry for the win. I like that coach, mm-hmm. Hugh Jackson. Well, that's it for the Hugh That Podcast this week. And remember, it's all good. It's all God. And it's all grambling. Thank you for tuning in.